I was 30 years old and I met this guy. Unbeknownst to me, he had a girlfriend. I had no idea. So I go to this place, never thinking that anything like that would happen to me. When I get there, he comes out of this building and he's very irate. And so he takes my hand and he turns me around. I have no idea what's going on. And a young lady comes out and she dashes me with um, a concoction that I now know is um, liquid red devil eye mixed with Clorox. And she dashes this on my face. And I instantly go blind and I'm laying there and um, my skin is literally falling off of my face. They fly me to Augusta Burn Center and I'm in a coma for a month or so. I wake up totally blind. Coming home blind to my four children was literally one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. But um, I fought, I fought, I, I wanted I wanted to regain my, my sense of motherhood. I was not gonna let them win and take everything from us. In any case where you've been a victim of something your power has been taken. Your ability to make decisions feels disjointed or disconnected. So we wanna be able to support them to give them back that sense of power, give them back that sense of knowing you are capable of making amazing decisions. The first steps that allowed me to heal, I would say uh, was acknowledging the fact that, you know, my mom would not be able to see again and just, you know, embracing it and not really looking at it as a negative thing, but just embracing the situation and the reality of it. I think many people would like to be able to forget their trauma and just move forward in their lives. It's In their minds, it's easier to do that. However, if you really want to heal the trauma, you've got to revisit it. You've got to talk about the events that happened. You have to be able to draw connections between what happened during that traumatic event and what's happening in your life now. It, and that's what truly moving past the trauma looks like, addressing it and healing from it. Growing up with siblings and sisters, they kind of, you know, blocked me from healing was, you know, me being tough and thinking that I'm a boy, I can't cry. You know, I got to be tough. I can't ask anybody about the situation. And I think for me, that definitely affected my relationships, not just then, but obviously when I got older, just, you know, women uh, being tough to the fact, you know, just loving um, and, and just kind of being that kind man. And that's something that, you know, I still deal with. Recognizing that you do have trauma is the main thing and getting, seeking the help that you need so that it's not trickled down from generation to generation. It's a must that you recognize Healing is a process. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. When you think about healing in terms of men and women, women have an advantage only in that we've been socialized our entire lives that it's okay to be nurturers, to share our feelings. We have a greater vocabulary for being able to express emotions more so than men do. Men are socialized not to ask for help, accept help, or offer help. It's very important for us to begin when they're young, especially with our sons and young people, to normalize showing emotions other than anger. I have children, you know, obviously. My trauma can affect their view. How I cut that off is by telling my kids I love them every day, uh, seeing my kids, uh, picking my kids up from school like I have to do today the absence of love growing up and dealing with a lot of trauma. I know I wanted the opposite for myself and for my kids when I got older. I think that recognizing that you have been through trauma and that you were, as I, what I call DeAndre, I said, you know, you're a survivor of domestic violence. Just because you were not physically beaten, you were there and you experienced it. For him to grow up and be the man that he is now, I'm enamored by his strength and his willpower. My mom and I, we talk about everything. It's very hard for people to understand, um, you know, walking walking through the airport, holding holding your mom's hands, you know, everywhere you go, um, you know, and, and people just, you know, looking like, man, like, I, I've never held my mom's hand. You know, it, it makes people kind of wake up, you know, just and, and just love what they have, um, you know, when they see that bond that my mom and I have, and that's something that, you know, we're, we're proud of.